AI means for supply chains today and tomorrow. Natu Linder is CVP of Industry Strategies in the Product Management Group of Blue Yonder. Hello, Matthew. Hello, Robert. Uh, nice to be with you today. Let's just give me a portrait of it, of AI's status right now, where it's having the greatest impact on supply chains today. Uh, it's having a, a greatest impact on um, efficiency of the planners and on accuracy of the decisions which are made by the planners. Mm -hmm. Well, how then does it enable capabilities that didn't exist in the past? What can you do with AI now that you couldn't do without it years ago? In the past, I was able to create, for example, a forecast just based on shipment history, because that was just the little bit of data that we were able to support that a human was able to uh, create and understand. But uh, the forecasting, as an example of application of AI, is much wider. It's also about the weather. It's about the events. It's about the GDP. It's about all the causal factors which are surrounding our space in the ecosystem, which can be, in fact, learned by AI in order to come up with a more explainable and accurate forecast. You deal with far more data than we ever could as people. <laughs> Couldn't Correct. get our brains around all the uh, stuff out there. Of course, AI has been around for decades by that name. Doesn't mean it took the same, it's taking the same form now that it did in the beginning. What has happened to AI in the last few years has made it suddenly kind of, you know, on the, on the stage front and center right now? So access to the data and the compute power. So we were able, you know, to have, you know, preliminary AI and you could call, you know, um, planning optimization or forecasting, you could call that AI. But uh, now with the size of the data that we have, that we can grasp from you know, the ecosystem and the cloud system and the ability, in fact, to scale up, scale in, you know, in the cloud, our architecture to execute, you know, that gives us, you know, a, a, new, a, new, a new dimension for mm -hmm. forecasting accuracy, for supply chain planning, accuracy and efficiency gains. A lot of the talk about AI in the last year or so has circled around generative AI and large language models. Is that what we're talking about today? Or do you see AI in a broader sense also contributing to the supply chain? Correct. You have, in fact, think about two categories of AI. There is the, let's say, the um, predictive AI, which is, you know, what we've done, in fact, before generative AI. That's the unsupervised learning. That's a supervised learning. Those techniques which have been there for the couple of years, which have been maturing, yes, in the past couple of years. Uh, and, and the Gen AI is the new category, which is indeed uh, uh, giving us a, a new set of use case again to uh, come up with a, a more efficiency today with supply chain planning. And, and we will see later more autonomous uh, decision in supply chain planning. Mm -hmm. But it's not just Gen AI we're talking about. It's not just Gen AI. It's a much it's larger both. universe. Correct. And, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And machine learning as well, which I assume is can be considered like a subset of AI getting better as it goes. I mean, the very name machine learning implies that it, the, the, the model gets better. I, I take it that, you know, every day it's more effective. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It continuously learns. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you bring it into an organization of people who are still there in the organization who haven't had experience with it. What kinds of new skills must managers and workers acquire in order to work side by side with AI in the supply chain? Yeah, correct. There's a, a significant change in terms of skill. There's a little bit of uh, of uh, unlearning, you know, for the experienced people which have been using, you know, the the former technologies and experts in Excel or so in macro. They have to unlearn that because mm -hmm. that is all the things that are being, in fact, automated. Uh, they need to, in in fact, embrace a little bit more of the out output of of AI. And and that's where that way it's not just the output; it's also on our side to make to make the AI explainable. You know, that's the condition, in fact, for users to onboard, accept, trust the result of AI. So our research is is not just you know I I, I we give you we you know we give you a uh, a new AI. It's also an explain an explainable AI. Mm -hmm. The the skills the skills are are also changing. Right when it comes to Gen AI. Um, it will be more like uh, we are going to train, you know, a demand planner is going to be training, think about training avatar or training agents uh, to do what that person was doing before, right? And 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 maybe we are going towards a, you know, an upskilling of people that are, you know, less uh, hands on the keyboard, you know, to make simulations and uh, address, manage the data, but more, 
uh, training different different skills of of, of AI agents, right? Uh, building up maybe a, a fleet of 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 AI agents. Mm. Where do you think that AI is being overly hyped or oversold right now? Gen AI, you know, appeared you know a bit more than a year ago. So, um, you know, all the all the new use cases that uh, that have been released or that have been communicated to the market, you know, may not be uh, may be on the hype. It means that they may not be in use at scale, right? And and we know we know that Gen AI can derail completely with more data with hallucination. So it yeah. needs a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. So looking to the future, we can only assume that the AI technology is going to get better and better. How do you see it evolving in the future, in particular applications to supply chain? And you had mentioned prescriptive AI, which is still in its early phases, as opposed to descriptive or predictive, where it's actually making decisions. How is that all going to evolve? And, you know, I'd hate to ask you to look into a crystal ball and say, how soon? But what is your vision of AI in the future? Uh there, there is a, there is a absolutely that vision which is, uh, which is now near, right? And, and in fact, you know, the, the prescriptive AI is something we've been talking for, for four or five years that we've been, in fact, a pro that companies have been prototyping that idea where I've got a problem and I could have an AI that, in fact, resolves automatically my problem. Uh, that is, you know, that has been. Uh, let's say something that was born maybe four or five years ago, and with the execution, with the uh, client onboarding, I think we are we are getting more mature. Where where there is still a journey is is exactly on the Gen AI side, which is having more of a um, you know a, a, the, the, where where the role of the demand planner of the supply planner uh, today is kind of more uh, making the decision on its own on his own on her own by Clicking on the button by uh, making decisions, maybe maybe the maybe the the shift with Gen AI is going to have actually to Gen, the Gen AI to run you know what we call the microservices to run the planning services and to orchestrate the decision. So that is that is a fundamental shift, and 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 this is this is probably technically possible from a you know a service and a technology standpoint but the maturity is going to be the maturity journey is going to be huge from our organization so i think technology robert technology is there but the uh, onboarding we have to learn also from our, from the clients on how to onboard that change in organization so it's probably another another 2 to 3 years before we can really before organization we can really scale with that full automation thank you very much to Matthew for those insights into the state of ai and the supply chain now and in the future May I take a moment, though, to ask you a little bit about Blue Yonder specifically? Where do you guys fit into the picture of the subject we're talking about today? We've uh, uh, we've been uh, we are an R and D company, right? We are um, um, we have we are engineering heavy, right? We've um, we've been building, releasing patents on on AI for decades. Uh, and uh, as you may know, you know we are predicting more than uh, in a billion. Um, points of, of predictions every day uh, across large retailers at scale. And, and as we just talked about, you know, um, AI breaks when it moves to high scalability. And that's where we are. So we are supporting, you know, uh, uh, high level scalability of machine learning predictions. So we are, we are, in a, we are, Blue Yonder is, a, is, a, is in a good spot. Matthew Linder of Blue Yonder, once again, thank you very much for your insights into the state of AI in the supply chain and telling us a little bit about Blue Yonder as well. Thank you very much for being with me today. Thank you, Robert.